Give your kids a head start for school this year. Teach them how to say dodecagon. Make sure they're well supplied with number two pencils and don't let them trade their milk money for micro jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. If you've been thinking about earning some income with your woodworking, this dodecagon frame would be a great project to sell. You can batch them up and make a whole bunch at once, giving you a great profit margin. It's a 12-sided desktop frame designed to hold standard four by six photos. You can make it with four slots, a slot on each facet, or even a continuous slot for infinite photo arrangements. Or you can go more traditional and make one with a back. You can make dozens of these in a week in, and I would price them in the $30 to $40 range. And I want to thank my friend Bill Wilson once again for another great project idea. The angle on each piece of a 12-sided shape is 15 degrees. I'm going to show you two different methods to make those bevels. The first one is using my table saw crosscut sled. This is my little sled that I use for different sized bevels, but over time this throat has gotten really wide and I don't want anything falling down in there, so I'm gonna make a quick zero clearance plate. I just got this piece of masonite or hardboard that'll set down in here. Since I'm gonna be measuring the angle on the outside of my blade, I'll dial this into 75 degrees. Now I can cut that slot out. I'm setting the stop block two inches from the blade. The wider the board, the more frames I'll be able to cut out of a single board. This is about 28 inches long and eight inches wide. I'll cut 12 pieces, flipping the board after each cut. Okay, with all 12 pieces cut, I just glue together the beveled sides. I'm laying a couple of strips of tape down, sticky side up. Ah, this blue tape isn't sticking very well. I can still make it work. I'm gonna use this strap clamp around the middle. And I'll let this one dry while I get started on the next method. This time I'll glue together the edges. I'll cut this into one long strip two inches wide with 15 degree bevels on each edge. I've got my blade straightened back out. I'm gonna use my big table saw sled to cut this board into 12 pieces. I think I found some tape that's a little bit stickier than that last strip. The trade-off by using this method and gluing the edges together is that the joints will be stronger, but the faces of the frames will be the end grain, which may be a look that you don't care for. I can let both of those dry all the way. Now it's been a couple hours, I'll see how this one turned out. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. It really is surprising how strong end grain gluing can be. Obviously, I wouldn't want to use it for making furniture, but for something like this, it's good. There's several different ways I could slice this up. I could use my rip fence, but I think I'll have more control if I use my sled and this board as a stop block. You can make these whatever width you want. Slice the other one up. Now's when you can really unleash your creativity and customize each one of these. In fact, if you're gonna sell these at a craft fair or online, I suggest making each one different so that customers have a lot of different options. The first order of business is to cut slots in each one of these to hold the pictures. I'm gonna use this rabbiting or slot cutting bit in my router for all of them.
And I thought I would make one more traditional kind of frame with a back. I think a clear lacquer finish looks great on the frames with the ingrain faces, but a clean, modern, colorful look seems to suit others. Recent archaeological evidence indicates that for billions of years, Stone Age humans simply let their beards grow with reckless abandon. They didn't seem to care at all about their appearance until dinosaur rats began nesting in those beards, often establishing entire colonies. Dining out with proto-hipsterists became an embarrassing experience as rat droppings frequently fell into the velociraptor soup or saber-toothed tiger steak. Clearly the male gender was on the brink of extinction, and Ice Age men everywhere on Earth would have died out if it hadn't been for a few resourceful men who bucked the trend and started routinely shaving with nothing but Venus flytraps, hot lava, and their bare hands. Now, more than a hundred years later, I'm able to get a close, comfortable shave every morning with Harry's. Oh wait, Harry's has just evolved even more with their next generation of razors and blades. There's improved flexibility in the hinge for a more comfortable glide. They've added a trimmer blade for hard to reach places. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And the rubber texturized grip provides more control when your hands are wet. For just 15 bucks you get a weighted razor handle of your choice, moisturizing shave cream, three precision engineered cartridges, and a travel cover. Take $5 off your first order by clicking on the link in the description and using the promo code WOODWORKING at checkout. The Stone Age is over. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you're thinking about earning some extra income with your projects, here's another unique, easy to make frame that sells well at craft fairs. Here's an easy project. It's a great way to use up some scrap wood in your shop and practice some bent lamination. Projects like this one are great because even though you batch them up, it doesn't feel like assembly line work because you can customize each one and make them all unique. For more picture frame ideas, click the box on the left and be sure to check out our latest latest video on home and garden for mere mortals. Hyla's back this week with a really informative video on how to store fresh produce. Check it out and please subscribe to both of my channels. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next week.